Come on. Hey, y'all. How are you? My name is Jeremy. I got Stormy here with me. Uh, I'm going to read uh, a devotional from you from this devotion book, a three minute devotion. Uh, they're not for a specific day. I'm just trying to make it through the entire book. I, uh, I promised God once I got saved that I would serve Him in any way that I can and glorify Him in any way that I can. So I, I do these. Uh, uh, Dr. Louis Acosta does that too. He uh, he would always write posts, but uh, got to be a pretty good typer, which I am. But I'd rather I'm very photogenic. I would have to say humbly and yeah, photogenic and good at speaking. And this helps me with my speaking skills in front of people, and it's, uh, it certainly has. And I get better and better about speaking about uh, godly things or biblical things, especially when you need to witness to people. It uh, makes it easier than writing stuff down because there is uh, thousands of books, self-help books on uh, Christianity or the only book you need to know really is the Bible. When you know the Word of God, it's very strong, very powerful. It's full of knowledge and wisdom. And uh, But other books are great too to get perspective on real uh, reality quotes, I said, on real things that happen to real people in real life uh, every day from third world countries to uh, uh, <laughs> upper class, upper class uh, citizens, let's say. So same problems as we had 2,000 plus years ago still affect us today, just in different ways. The devil is still here. Uh, he is the god of the air here on this planet. He's still kind of way controls this planet. Uh, I had a great question today sent to me that uh, I didn't quite know the answer to. Um, God knows all. God created Adam. He created that tree of knowledge too, and he's told Adam, don't eat from that tree of, uh, what is it, tree of knowledge, right? And uh, But Eve goes and does it. The serpent's there. He's already kicked Satan out of heaven. I guess he's kicked Satan out of heaven and he's on earth. But earth was made perfect, but that serpent happened to be there, and Eve sinned, and then Adam sinned, and it all went to, uh, yeah, it didn't go well. Uh, the question was, didn't God know that they would do that? That they would sin if he's all-knowing? I was like, oh, I don't know. It's just like the old saying, was it the chicken or the egg first? I don't know. Uh, did God know that would happen? Uh, and years and years after that, it was terrible, terrible, terrible stuff. Um, leading from Noah to Moses to uh, the different kings in Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar and all that stuff. Um, did God know that would happen? Did he ever know that he was going to send his son, Jesus, the Messiah, to save us, to be the sacrifice? The Lamb of God, the perfect, the perfect, um, perfect. He'll be a God in the flesh. Incredible stuff, huh? Did God know that Eve would eat from that forbidden fruit? Hmm. Even though he said not to. Wow. Crazy, huh? Good question. Trouble letting go. Let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, he said. And then I will come with you. Oh, I know where this is going. This is great. I love this. But this is Old Testament. This is 1 Kings nineteen twenty. Elijah had trouble letting go. 1 Kings 19, 19 through 21. When the prophet Elijah made Elisha his successor, Elijah's first reaction was to go home and say goodbye to his parents. His reaction is similar to those who made excuses for not following Christ. This is it. In his parable of the great banquet, Luke 14, 15 through 23, Jesus recounted three things people had trouble releasing. The first man bought land and needed to see it. He couldn't let go of his place. The second man bought oxen and had to see them. He couldn't let go of his possessions. The third man wanted to be with his new wife. He couldn't let go of people. Elijah and the characters in Christ's parable had the opportunity for a new life, but the stories end differently. Elijah severed the ties to his past and went after his future. The characters in Christ's parables wouldn't let go. They lost the opportunity. We need empty hands to take up our cross and follow him. Mark 8, 34 through 38. <laughs> Never heard it that way, that we need empty hands to pick it up. Huh. I know we need to uh, empty, <laughs> empty our minds of all the trash, all the past history. It did create 
it did make us who we are, built up our characters, but it could have made us bad and could have made us good. But uh, it gives us an awesome testimony that God will use that is unique. He'll use it to save hundreds of thousands of people if you're bold and obedient and uh, to what he tells you to do. Cool. Pretty good. God may not cling to places, possessions, or people, but follow you wholeheartedly. Help me to let go of things that would prevent me from living from you. That is so cool. Pray that every night. God, if I'm doing something that you don't want me to be doing or watching something or hanging around somewhere or with someone, uh, please uh, reveal that to me and take it out of my life if I'm sinning against you in any way or just doing something that is dishonoring you, is not holy, isn't righteous isn't going to make me more Christ-like, isn't going to glorify your kingdom, please take it away. So when you're doing that, doing a, a self-assessment, a self-audit, and see if uh, what you are doing is going to affect you in the future to where you want to go. Uh, yeah, we you'll hear the justifications that we want entertainment, or we need downtime, or we need uh, cheat days, but uh, yeah, you have to pray about that, all right? Just stay focused. Um, you can always be pretty productive on fulfilling God's purpose and plan for your life. It's pretty awesome stuff. Just remember to have faith. Faith, even if uh, the woman, she, woman that she just tithed her last pennies, is she had the most faith. She had the least, but she actually tithed the most because she had the least, but she just gave it all. That's obedience right there. So have faith in stuff like that, especially letting that go because what God says, God says, just trust me, right? I'll provide all your needs, all right? So, so very cool. Trust me. I'll work through people. Uh, I'll use the Holy Spirit to work through people and move through them. And you'll see. You'll see it'll happen way better than you expected. Or the grace and mercy that I will show you, that other people will show you. And you won't know how you made it through. But you did somehow. And if you really look back on it, it was God the whole time. He was always with you, always taking care of you. Uh, so do what's right. Always do the appropriate thing. Do what's appropriate. Do the next right thing. Um, <laughs> cool. Love you guys. Stay in the Word of God. Word of God. Read some Bible verses. Do some devotionals. All right. Pray. Pray. Big things happen when you pray, especially praying on your knees. Quiet time, alone with God, just talking to Him, uh, staying in close connection with Him. All right, however you do that, don't get too carried away doing other things. Uh, but God can be with you when you're doing other things by having the uh, worship music on. Uh, worship and praising God is super important. Knowing the Word of God and hearing that repetition is super good. That's the armor of God. But uh, worship and praising Him, that never gets old to God. Uh, he'll always be with you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. It is pretty awesome. And that is a truth, a promise. All right? So don't be scared. Don't be afraid. Don't have fear. Don't be nervous. God is walking right there with you. Jesus is right there with you through these things. He will give you the knowledge, the wisdom, and the courage, and the power, and the love that you need uh, to prevail. It's pretty awesome stuff. All right? So be smart about what you're doing. Pray about stuff. Be patient. Remember to love God and love people, all right? Take care, guys. See ya. Bye.